The last prophet in the world, last prophet in the world, last prophet in the world to show how to be closer to Allah. He is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The day of Badr was on Friday, the 17th of Ramadan, during the second Hijri. In this battle, the Prophet Muhammad was the main leader or commander-in-chief of the army. Abu Bakr, Hamza, Omar, and Ali, peace be upon them, were the battlefield commanders. In the morning, Prophet Muhammad set up the Muslims' army in a very good way. When the enemy saw that the Muslim soldiers were all set up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put fear into their heart. They became very scared to fight with the Muslims. But the bad Abu Jahal brainwashed all of the Quraysh to fight with the Muslims. Both battle groups positioned themselves face to face. The Prophet ordered the Muslims not to start the fight at first. If the enemy started to fight, only then would the Muslims start the fight. He also advised them to stay in their position, and when the enemies would come closer to fight, they would use their arrows. And when the enemies came extremely close, only then were they allowed to use their swords. But of course, the battle started by an arrogant, bad Quraysh. He wanted to take control of the Muslims' water well all by himself. So he started to fight with Hamza peace be upon him and finally died. He was the first death in the Battle of Badr. Before the battle began, the bad Utba took his brother Shaiba and his son Walid to challenge against the Muslim. So, from the Muslim army, three Ansar came forward to fight against them. Utba started coming forward, but then, just when he was about to fight, he realized that he didn't recognize any of those Muslims because they were the Muslims from Medina. So then, he said that he wanted to fight with the Muslims from Mecca. Then, Muhammad wasallam sent Hamza, Ali, and Ubaidah, peace be upon them, to fight with the enemies. Hamza, peace be upon him, easily destroyed Shaiba. Ali, peace be upon him, easily destroyed Wali. But Ubaidah, peace be upon him, and the bad Utbah were still fighting against each other. Hamza and Ali, peace be upon them, came to help and destroyed the evil Utbah. Ubaidah, peace be upon him, got hurt very badly. And after four to five days, he died. Right after when the Quraysh just lost their three best fighters, they became very upset and attacked the Muslims with their full strength. As planned before, the Muslims did not move from their place. When the enemies came closer, the Muslims started to strike their arrows and started saying loudly, Ahad! Ahad! Or one! One! Immediately, all of a sudden, the enemy started to lose their life. And that made the enemies mentally feel very weak. When the enemies were very close to the Muslims, Prophet Muhammad took a handful of dust and threw it onto the enemies and prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to destroy their faith. He then ordered the Muslims to fight with the enemies in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Muslims were mentally very strong and focused and with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessing, it was very easy for them to destroy their enemies one by one. It was a horrible moment for the bad Quraysh 
because they had to fight with the Muslims along with 1,000 unseen angels. Even though the Prophet was the commander-in-chief for the Muslims, there was a point where the Prophet came into the battlefield in order to encourage his people. At that point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Surah Kamar, verse 45, to give the good news of the Muslims' victory. After they saw Prophet Muhammad in the battlefield, the Muslims' army got more excited and fought like the strongest army in the world. When the Muslims fought the battle with the strength of a lion, all of the sudden, the Quraysh were very confused. Because Iblis wanted the bad people to win the war, in that battle, Iblis also joined by taking the shape of Suraka. However, when he saw the army of angels, he ran away from the battlefield into the Red Sea. Did Iblis really come to fight with the Muslims? Yes. In Surah Anfal, verse 48, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that Iblis escaped from the battlefield. On the other hand, as the commander-in-chief from the Quraysh's side, Abu Jahal was giving directions to his soldiers of the Quraysh army. Abu Jahal was extremely protected by many soldiers. No Muslim could come near him. At one point, two young Muslim boys came to Abdurrahman, peace be upon him, who was from Mecca, to show them who Abu Jahal was because they both wanted to destroy the most evil man from Quraysh. Both of the young boys attacked Abu Jahal and he fell down from his horse. Of the two boys who went to attack Abu Jahal, one of them was Muad bin Amr, who was injured by Abu Jahal's son and lost one of his hands. Along with him, the other boy, Muad bin Asra, died in the battlefield. But Abu Jahal was badly injured and was lying on the battlefield. Then, Abdullah bin Masood finally destroyed the evil guy, Abu Jahal, who was the greatest enemy of Islam. After Abu Jahal's death, the Quraysh soldiers became scared and tried to run away from the battlefield. Unlike any other battle, these soldiers were not fighting for land, money, or honor because they were fighting over the belief of one and only God. The Muslims had to fight against their own fathers, uncles, brothers, cousins, and friends, and even their own sons. Omar, peace be upon him, had to kill his own maternal uncle, Ahaz, and Abu Bakr had to fight with his own son. And even in that war, the Prophet's uncle, Abbas, was captured as well. Fourteen brave Muslims died in the Battle of Badr. Six were Muhajirin, the Muslims from Mecca, and eight were the Ansar, the Muslims from Medina. They were buried at Badr, and even to this day, that area is still marked. On the other side, 70 bad Quraysh were killed and 70 soldiers were arrested by the brave Muslims. Out of those people who died, most of them were different tribe leaders and important people from the Quraysh. So because they were extremely bad people who made the Muslims suffer, those dead Quraysh bodies were thrown into a bad melling well. After the battle was over, Prophet Muhammad stayed in Badr for three days to make sure that the Quraysh wouldn't come attack again. Before the Prophet left Badr, 
He called all the souls from the dead Christ leaders and told them how terrible their luck was just because they did not accept the one and only true God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he told them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had kept his promise and gave the victory to the Muslims. Creating videos about Prophet Muhammad wasallam's life is a lot of work. And because of that, for this series, inshallah, there will be several videos in order to cover his entire life story. We are trying to produce the best quality which takes a lot of time and money. We are giving special thanks to each and every one of our supporters who gave a one-time donation or a monthly gift. And if you haven't yet supported us, it's never too late because we are always trying to produce the best content for all of you. The Prophet Story